Funny enough, the first time I actually feast my eyes on Harmony Corinne's directorial debut, Gummo, was actually in Hype Williams' 1998 gangster redemption flick, Belly, in the scene you just watched. When I finally did see the film, I had a similar reaction to my boy Mark here. But then, as time went on, I've grown to appreciate this little gem of an oddity more and more. In the first few minutes of the film, a cat is picked up by the scruff of its neck and is drowned in a barrel of water, a scene which sets the tone for much of what's to come. When people reflect on Gummo, they tend to center on the sideshow that is the grotesque nature of the film's visuals. There's no doubt that Corinne had set out to shock and horrify his audience, but if you can get past the almost violent nature of the repulsive imagery, there's a lot of meat left on Gummo's bones. It's certainly not for everyone, but at its core, it's an effective and poignant meditation on life death, and various forms of alienation, which cause some to live as though they aren't really alive in the first place. The film tells the story of Xenia, Ohio, a few years after a devastating tornado tore the town to pieces. It has no formal beginning, middle, or end, and is composed of Polaroid stills, Super 8 film and found home movies, as well as professional 35mm film. This collage-like organization mirrors the aforementioned tornado and creates coherence out of chaos. The film was apparently only 75% scripted, and out of the 40 speaking roles available, only 5 were played by experienced actors. The garbled story follows two young boys, Solomon and Tumblr, on a regular day in their nihilistic, lonely lives. They order milkshakes, huff glue, and shoot stray cats in order to make money, selling them to the local meat market for a dollar a pound. The women of the town are represented mainly by three sisters. There is Dot, a woman who might be beautiful if it weren't for her disastrously frayed and freakishly blonde hair and eyebrows, and her two sisters. One is shorter, less attractive, and more inbred looking blonde, and the other a young brunette child. A number of other scenes are positioned throughout the film, including an intoxicated man, played by Corinne himself, flirting with a gay dwarf, a man pimping his Down Syndrome afflicted sister, a drunken party with arm and chair wrestling, and two skinhead brothers boxing each other in their kitchen. There are also a number of even smaller scenes depicting satanic rituals, footage seemingly from home movies, and conversations containing racial bigotry. searching for their missing cat, the sisters encounter an old man who cons the women into getting into his car and then proceeds to shove his hand up one of their skirts. As he drives off, he continues to degrade the women. Unlike Tumblr and Solomon, the sisters are possessed by a human spirit that is keenly alive. However, in the end, they wind up as isolated and alienated from society and normalcy as the boys. That is really the core of Gummo, an exploration at the ways we become alienated from life during our formative years. One by one, the film displays dysfunctional family systems, poverty, drug and alcohol abuse, degrading sexual behavior, violence, illness, and ugliness. Each scene further isolates the characters that inhibit this fictional world. Each scene sucks a little bit of life out of its already lifeless characters. In the end, we are left with the film's most haunting and memorable scene. Solomon, bathing in ridiculously dirty bathwater, while his mom serves him grotesque looking servants of spaghetti and strawberry milk. This is oddly, perhaps, the most inhuman scene of the film, which is really saying a lot, and serves as the perfect metaphor for the alienation from humanity that Gumbo's inhabitants feel. They don't just feel it, they bathe in it. It surrounds them. It is their reality. 
Somehow, often within a single scene or image, Gummo managed to be simultaneously indefensible, dismissible, exploitative, heartbreaking, and completely rejuvenating. The effect is as horribly entertaining as it is depressing. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so.